This short and snappy is about 19 minutes and it covers how to overcome common barriers to parent caregiver involvement. You'll also learn useful techniques to lay the groundwork for parents and caregivers being involved in your Girl Scout troop. It is important to define to whom we're referring to when we say parent or caregiver. In the context of this training, parent or caregiver refers to anyone actively involved in the raising and educating of the girl in your troop. This could include extended family such as grandparents or aunts or even an adult sibling. Parent caregiver involvement yields many benefits. In fact, research confirms that all young people thrive when parents and caregivers are actively involved in their lives in positive ways. This is not only true in school-based settings, but also in community-based settings like Girl Scouts. For example, girls may be more likely to bring their best selves and best behavior to the troop meetings when parents are actively involved and invested in the troop. Girls may also experience a heightened sense of confidence when parents are involved in the troop. This is especially true for the younger age levels. And parent involvement will certainly lessen the troop leader's load. Troop leaders will benefit from that extra pair of hands and fresh ideas and perspectives. Where does parent caregiver involvement start? It begins at the parent meeting. The parent meeting is a perfect opportunity for you to express your expectation and need for parents and caregivers to help. Be sure to explain the benefits of their involvement for the troop meeting and for the Girl Scout. You can use the ones presented in this session or you can research and find your own. Also, be certain to reaffirm to parents that you are a volunteer and explain that you have a busy life outside of Girl Scouts just as they do and you could use all the help that you can get. Sometimes barriers come in the form of perceptions or misperceptions that the troop leaders or the parents or caregivers may have about the troop experience. Let's discuss. For example, a troop leader may think parents and caregivers simply don't want to help. The truth of the matter is you never know until you ask. Secondly, troop leaders may think that parents and caregivers involvement would be more trouble or hassle than it is help or assistance. The key here is to structure and organize their involvement in a way that the parents are clear about what's expected of them and the caregivers know exactly what you're going to have them do and for how long. This will minimize confusion and ensure that the experience is satisfying for both the troop and the parents and caregivers. And finally, troop leaders may assume that parents or caregivers might be offended if asked to help. And the reality here is it's all in how and when you ask. So you'll bring your best Girl Scout spirit to the request and you'll also make sure you time it in a way that parents are more apt to say yes rather than a quick hasty no. For example, if a parent or caregiver is wrestling with a busy toddler, that might not be the best time to ask them to volunteer with the troop. So bring your best courtesy and time your ask in a way that will be more likely to get you a yes. Along the same lines, parents may also carry some misperceptions about troop leaders as well. For example, parents and caregivers may assume that troop leaders simply don't need any help at all. You can dispel this myth by making the ask. Secondly, parents and caregivers may assume that troop leaders know how to do absolutely everything they want to do and have all the resources available. Again, you can dispel this myth by clearly explaining to parents what you're needing them to do bring or how they can be involved. 
and you can always benefit from fresh ideas and creativity. Let parents know that. And finally, some parents or caregivers may assume that troop leaders have tons of time to devote to the troop. While you may have organized time so that you can be an awesome troop leader, it's important to reaffirm to parents that you too have a busy life outside of Girl Scouts and that it's a team effort to ensure that the girls have a great Girl Scout year. Communication can dispel many misperceptions and clear up any confusion about how much you need their help. Now that you understand some of the benefits of parent-caregiver involvement and you've dealt with some common misperceptions, now it's time to open the door just a bit wider. When you make the ask for parents to help you, consider doing it in at least two different ways. First, face-to-face -face is a perfect opportunity for you to interact with parents in real time and Find out what their interests are so that you can make and ask for them to volunteer. If you don't get an immediate yes, consider using an alternative means, such as the volunteer toolkit or a text message or maybe even an email to ask parents to help you. The key is in asking more than once and in a different way. You likely get closer to a yes at one time then maybe another time. So consider two different methods. And prepare yourself for parent caregiver involvement by making room for parents in everything that you guys do. So as your troop plans activities, ask yourself, how can parents help me with this? Or as the troop plans for field trips or excursions, ask yourself, how could parent or caregivers help make this more successful? and then be flexible in how you define involvement. Involvement doesn't necessarily mean that the parents are always physically there. They may help you from behind the scenes by setting things up or organizing things or even just being an extra pair of busy hands when you need them. So be flexible in how you think about their involvement. And always include girls in the ask for parents to become involved. Girl Scouts can maybe create a cute craft or a cute idea and maybe attach a note to their parents and caregivers asking for them to volunteer with the troop. Approach your relationship with parents as a partnership. A partnership is a synergetic relationship that is mutually dependent and the individuals are interconnected by a shared vision. During your partnership, be sure to communicate with parents often and expect the communication to be two-way. Invite them to respond to your communications and open-ended questions are a good idea to facilitate further communication. Make certain parents know that you have a shared vision with them because you want great things for their Girl Scout just as they do. You are a partner in their child's development. By way of Girl Scouts, you're going to be building courage, confidence, and character as character traits in the girls who will be motivated to make the world a better place. This is a shared vision that reinforces your unified goals for the girls and gives you a commonality. As often as you're able, try to balance your communications with parents so that they are rooted in the positive more so than the negative. No one wants to talk to someone who consistently delivers bad information, so try to make a healthy balance between discussing issues of discipline, behavior, or even the need for money. Try to always communicate great things to that parent about her Girl Scout, and you'll build a rapport that will take on the characteristics of a partnership. As much as you're able, try to cultivate a culture of being parent and caregiver friendly. Make certain that parents realize that you actually see them as more than just parents and caregivers, but again, you're partners in their child's development. As often as you can, 
Greet parents with an eye-to-eye -eye hello when they drop their Girl Scout off at the troop meeting. If you're able, consider creating a family-friendly, caregiver-friendly, parent-friendly space or place outside of the troop meeting. If the venue offers in a little area where parents may sit and congregate, that's perfect. Lay out Girl Scout information or print off some fun Girl Scout facts and give the parents a place to kind of congregate. What you want to do is get them accustomed to being around the troop culture. Again, have this space outside of the troop meeting so that you can focus on the girls and the activities at hand, but parents will be more likely to stick around a bit and maybe they'll be motivated to volunteer at some point. The volunteer toolkit is your best friend with communicating with parents and caregivers. You can share wonderful information about what the Girl Scouts are doing in the troop and specific milestones that individual Girl Scouts are reaching. And if you do get parents who are eager to participate, make a big splash of recognition and support their effort by making sure everyone knows about it. If you're able, have a special event, maybe a tea or some sort of a potluck or an event to celebrate the parents who have volunteered. And include the girls. Have them brainstorm ways to thank parent volunteers often. What you're doing is creating a buzz, and this buzz will not only show appreciation to the parents that are helping, but it'll also motivate the parents and caregivers who are not to maybe step in and support the troop with their time. Continuing in the vein of a positive parent-friendly troop, Try to be intentional about sharing at least two positives with parents and caregivers about their particular Girl Scout at least twice a month. Also, plan to schedule at least two positive communications about troop activity at least two times a month. This builds a sense of rapport and an expectation to hear good news. Again, it's part of being a partner in the development of that Girl Scout and that will help parents see you as an ally and you'll represent a team that they want to be a part of. When parents say yes, you've got to be ready. Have a plan. Document how parents will support you, what task they will do, when, and for how long. And don't forget, the Volunteer Toolkit is a great resource for documenting these details so the entire troop can see them. You may also choose to record them in your phone, your tablet, but the key is to have a plan that is written or recorded somewhere so that the parent can be clear about what's expected of them and for how long. Other details you might want to clarify are their arrival time. When can parents and caregivers come? What's the latest they can come? What's the earliest they can come? What's the ideal time for them to come? Always clarify the where of their volunteer experience. If it's outside the regular troop meeting space, give them an address and maybe even directions. Make it easy for them. Always tell parents and caregivers what they should wear and how they should dress for their volunteer experience. Few things could be worse than coming to a messy Girl Scout craft in your work clothes. So let them know if they should bring casual or um, old clothes for the specific craft. If the parents or caregivers will be in touch with girls, as a whole, you've got to make sure that they follow the volunteer protocols. This means the background check and the registration with our organization. They must be registered members. And always clarify the time that the experience will end. That way parents will know how long they're volunteering and caregivers will know how to plan their day or their evening accordingly.
there are so many ways that parents and caregivers can be involved, and it's only fitting that we give you a few ideas. For example, maybe you could have a parent or caregiver responsible for managing the badges for the troop. Perhaps they can keep them organized and during troop ceremonies have them ready to be distributed. Field trips are a blast for Girl Scouts. Perhaps you can have a parent or caregiver that organizes the troops field trips. They can call the organization or the venue, set everything up, and all the troop has to do is show up. Perhaps you could have parent and caregivers share their expertise by leading an activity. Have you been to the community partner section of our website? There are so many community partners from which to choose. Perhaps you could have a parent caregiver whose only job is to keep track of the new additions and to be able to find experiences when the troop is ready for them. Volunteer Essentials is so crucial to the success and safety of your troop. Maybe you could have a parent whose role is to become well versed in Volunteer Essentials and support you in policy compliance. Perhaps you could have parent or caregivers who manage the recognitions of the troop leaders and the other individuals who volunteer for the troop. Special events are fun surprises throughout the Girl Scout year. Perhaps you could have parent and caregivers whose only role is to plan events for the troop. Potlucks, badge ceremonies, bridging ceremonies, and more. Do you need something from the Girl Scout shop? Perhaps that's a role that a parent or caregiver could fill. You can give them a list and they can go and do the shopping and bring the items back to you. Who couldn't use help with setting up and closing down the troop meeting? Perhaps you could have a parent whose only job is to help you to set up the, the troop meeting and a caregiver who might just help you to close down the troop meetings. How about a role for parents and caregivers who welcome other families to the troop? They can orient them, give them tips, and make them feel welcome. What about a parent caregiver who researches STEAM and STEM opportunities? STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Maybe a parent could find opportunities with the council or even around the council of boundaries to, that the troop can enjoy. There will simply be some parents and caregivers who will not be able to physically help you during troop meeting time. Perhaps they could leverage their expertise from afar. Maybe you have a parent or caregiver who is an engineer. Perhaps they can craft fun and exciting activities for the troop to teach the girls about the principles of engineering. Perhaps you have a parent who could never help you physically, but could possibly attend service meetings for you once a month. They could take notes and bring back the notes to you and keep you informed. Perhaps a parent or caregiver might be able to manage the troop's Facebook page or the Facebook group. Pinterest and Google are awesome resources for troop leaders. Maybe you could have a parent who can research fun activities from the comfort or convenience of his or her home. Again, parents might be able to make calls during the day to organize field trips and special speakers and experiences. And if none of them apply, consider creating a wish list for your troop. And maybe parents can simply buy items off the wish list. The key is to keep asking though. Just because a parent is not able to physically help you at one juncture of their life, doesn't mean they can never help you. So keep asking. <laughs>